Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for April the 4th, 2021. We begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled Prophets of Restoration. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Finding Hope in the Midst of Oppression. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 11. Our background scriptures are taken from uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 52, uh, verse 13, uh, chapter 53, uh, verse 12, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 35. Our print passage today. Uh, where our lesson will take place comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 11. Our key verse reads, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. That's taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to identify the connections between the suffering servant uh, in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 13 and also um, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12 and the resurre resurrected Christ in Luke chapter 24 Secondly, to affirm the joy of knowing that the suffering servant is the resurrected Jesus Christ. Thirdly, to share the story of the suffering servant who is the resurrected uh, Jesus Christ. We have three outlines today that will uh, be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, The Suffering Servant's Agony. Uh, the second outline is entitled, The Suffering Servant's Humiliation. And then the third outline is entitled, The Suffering Servant's Triumph. And so again, we are thanking, praising God for the opportunity to share our Sunday School lesson with you. Uh, we encourage you now to uh, get your Bible and be prepared. We have quite a few scriptures that we're going to give you today. Uh, that will uh, hopefully <clears throat> lead you in a path of, uh, of revisiting uh, prophecy or the uh, prophecy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the prophecy of the coming Messiah uh, through the eyes of uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah. Uh, and we certainly want you to be able to engage as we do in this season to reflect upon uh, the sacrifices of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, and it's striking to see from the Old Testament uh, certainly through the lens of Isaiah how much the Lord had uh, God had privied him to see um, uh, concerning the future um, how profound it is for for God to use uh, men in such a way to to engage them and to uh, allow them to see the future of the restoration of his people. Uh, I want to make a couple points about this book, uh, the prophet Isaiah. Uh, it's a very complex book. Uh, can be somewhat challenging to uh, to study, uh, but uh, the uh, prophet Isaiah, his name. Uh, essentially means uh, Jehovah is salvation. Uh, Isaiah is the great uh, messianic prophet and prince of the Old Testament uh, prophets. Uh, another point about the book of Isaiah, uh, it is structured in a way uh, from chapter 1 through uh, chapter 66 uh, in a series of uh, other books, if you will, or volumes of books um, to help uh, sort of understand where you are and how to study this book. So there are some seven different volumes of books within the 66 books of, uh, of Isaiah. 
uh, our lesson today uh, from Isaiah chapter 53 uh, comes from volume 7 of the book of Isaiah volume 7 and that book is entitled the book of comfort uh, volume 7 uh, from the book of Isaiah goes starts uh, at the 40th chapter uh, 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 verse 1 and then it goes all the way through the 66th chapter of uh, Isaiah verse 24 uh, and it deals with uh, 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 comfort uh, in various aspects uh, uh, um, as the Lord would allow uh, Isaiah to understand uh, and particularly in this volume 7 um, as it deals with uh, this comfort uh, Isaiah chapter 49 through uh, chapter 57 deals with the comfort in the prophecy of Messiah uh, Redeemer uh, chapter 49 through 57 uh, deals with uh, this Messiah Redeemer. So this is volume 7, if you will, of the book of Isaiah. Hope that makes sense for you today. Uh, but there's so much to the book of Isaiah uh, that we want to be able to make sure that we understand exactly where we are uh, because we are in the 53rd chapter that aligns us right up with volume 7. And keep in mind, we are talking about comfort. We are looking at the comfort or, or, or the comfort that the Messiah would bring as a result of his sacrifice uh, through the prophet Isaiah. I also want to make mention here, uh, before we get to the biblical context, uh, our lesson topic uh, talks about finding hope in the midst of oppression. I want to underscore this word hope. We're not talking about uh, the hope that the world offers, uh, uh, but we're talking about biblical hope. Uh, biblical hope is the anticipation of, uh, of a favorable outcome under God's guidance. Uh, we're talking about biblical hope. Uh, and so this is what we want to be able to uh, ascribe to this lesson today. And certainly we're living in a pivotal age today uh, that uh, certainly in this pandemic and all of the things that have been sort of the fallout, if you will, of, of this pandemic, uh, we are uh, in a position now, um, we're looking for biblical hope. Uh, we're looking for biblical hope uh, in the midst of oppression, our trials, our tribulation, uh, unjust treatment, if you will. Uh, and so this is what the lesson, uh, certainly through Isaiah, is leading us to understand from a historical standpoint uh, as we get into uh, uh, the northern and the southern kingdoms of Israel, uh, um, particularly of Judah, the southern kingdom, uh, we're going to uh, focus this lesson today, but but God was using uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah uh, to minister in a way to help his people look to the future of what the Messiah would do, uh, and certainly that is our aim today. And it should be underscored that this prophecy here uh, 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 that Isaiah is sharing with us uh, in Isaiah 53 has been fulfilled and at some point uh, over the course of our lesson today I want to be able to give you the New Testament or the fulfillment of this Old Testament type or this prophecy uh, because it has been it has been uh, fulfilled and so we need to uh, understand uh, where we need to be looking in terms of scripture uh, to see what the Lord uh, not only prophesied uh, through Isaiah, but that he accomplished. So let's get on with this biblical context here from our uh, lesson quarterly. And I just want to read a little bit from uh, our lesson standard as well. But the prophet Isaiah 
uh, was called and commissioned by God to minister to a nation, uh, to the nation of Judah, the southern kingdom, and the city of Jerusalem, uh, Judah's capital during the reigns of Uzziah, uh, Jotham, uh, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. These these kings here are, are, are pivotal for us to understand because uh, 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 kings, uh, as we look at them in the Old Testament passages, uh, 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 help us to understand how God was uh, evaluating them. Uh, and so out of these kings here, uh, Uzziah was a good king, uh, Jotham was a good king, Ahaz was uh, a wicked king, and Hezekiah was a good king. And so uh, uh, God was evaluating these particular individuals uh, uh, and their kingship based on their conduct and that's how we understand uh, uh, their leadership and how critical it was for them to lead the people uh, in a way that was pleasing to God uh, they either accomplished this or they failed uh, and so uh, uh, when we talk about them being good kings we should understand that they were compliant, if you will, under the legal system or the Mosaic law at that time as God had prescribed for his people. When we look at them um, uh, as being wicked kings, whoever they may be, uh, then they fail to adhere to the, to the legal system or the Mosaic system, the standards by which God had laid out. Uh, and you can see more about this in, uh, I believe, Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, and 29. Help us to understand there were blessings uh, uh, for Israel for their obedience. And there were also curses uh, for their disobedience. And this included the leadership. Uh, and so it was, it was critical uh, that the leadership, the kings, uh, at, at, during the reign of, uh, of their of their time, if you will, or their leadership uh, was specifically geared to lead the people in a way that uh, uh, they would be free or that they would be able to be victorious uh, and certainly they would receive the blessings uh, from the Lord. But if, if not, then one of the curses, if you will, was, uh, was, was uh, that they would be overtaken by their enemies and we find this uh, if we study this a little bit more, these two military campaigns during uh, Israel's uh, uh, time was the Assyrian uh, camp military campaign, uh, and that was also the Babylonian uh, uh, campaign, as we are going to see uh, in this lesson today, particularly as it deals with Judah. So Isaiah responded enthusiastically to his call even though he knew his ministry was destined uh, uh, to fall on deaf ears and be rejected. And let's just stop right there. There's a lot more we could say uh, to you about this but we do know that uh, the Babylonians uh, wreaked havoc upon Judah uh, because of uh, 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 her disobedience and Isaiah predicted uh, Judah's uh, eventual defeat by the Babylonians and the subsequent exile of, of the survivors. And so uh, from our uh, lesson standard, the span of Isaiah's prophetic ministry included the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel to Assyria in 722 BC and also the southern kingdom of Judah was in danger of going in the same route in 701 BC. However, the presence and the prayers of a godly king, Hezekiah, and you can see this in Hezekiah chapter 30, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 37, uh, verses 14 through 20, resulted in an outcome far different from what the north uh, or the northern kingdom of Israel experienced. So Isaiah assured the king that the capital city of Jerusalem would be spared. That's in Isaiah chapter 37 verses 33 through 35 and it was in a miraculous act of deliverance and then that's in Isaiah 37 
uh, verse 36. And I just want to stop right there. There's so much more uh, uh, that we could say about the historical aspect of this prophecy. But Isaiah looked beyond even this restoration to someone far greater uh, than um, Cyrus. You can see reference for him, uh, for Cyrus, in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, and also Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. All right, so let's get into our lesson outlines today as we uh, look at this prophecy and keep in mind that uh, um, uh, the backdrop of this lesson is sin. Uh, we cannot overlook the fact of uh, the people were required, God's people were required to live a certain way. Uh, and so uh, the law, uh, though it was exhaustive in terms of its prescribing how the people should live, uh, uh, there was no power uh, uh, from that system. Uh, so the people had no power uh, uh, to really stay the course, to be consistent, and they were always on and off and on and off of their obedience and disobedience. Uh, uh, unto God and so but but it was the system at that time uh, and so this suffering servant here as uh, Isaiah is prophesying would come and he would come to address uh, uh, the 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 broader issue uh, of of what was ailing uh, humanity not just Israel uh, uh, but to deal with sin in a way to eradicate it by power. Keep that in mind. And so uh, Isaiah's words uh, uh, brought a message of hope and comfort uh, for the Babylonian exile. So these individuals had gone into exile, but God was comforting them through the prophet to look to the future, to the Messiah who would come and who would uh, uh, deal with this sin issue, uh, this nature issue, not uh, so much a particular thing that was done, but the reason why that uh, uh, Israel and even today, even why we sin uh, and, and we put a lot of emphasis on the things that we do or the types of sins that we commit. And that may be a relevant discussion, but the bigger issue goes to the core of why we sin and and if we if we don't address the core of why we sin then we will continue to sin i hope that makes sense for you today so there's a heart problem here and there's a mind problem here there's a deeper issue here that god is addressing and this is the reason why he is uh, prophesying through isaiah that he would send someone to deal with the broader or the deeper issue of sinful nature of the sinful nature of mankind so let's begin uh, our first outline the suffering servants agony this is taken from Isaiah chapter 53 uh, verses 4 through 6 and I want to read this from the NIV translation uh, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted verse 5 he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed verse 6 we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity uh, of us all so what is Isaiah saying here uh, and I'm sure the hearers at that time may not have appreciated uh, what Isaiah was saying uh, and how broad uh, the issues were that God was uh, was looking at and was going to address uh, through sending his only begotten son. So Isaiah takes a look at the uh, uh, 
the Messiah's life. Uh, and, and so his life, Christ's life, his suffering, uh, and his agony. Why is Christ suffering? Why is he suffering? Why is he taking up our pain? Why is he, uh, uh, as it says here, he's boring or he and bore our suffering. Uh, 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 but yet we considered him punished by God. Uh, stricken by him and afflicted. Why is this necessary? Uh, one of the things that we want to make sure that we appreciate about this passage here uh, is that sin, there's two things about sin that we need to know as it relates to Jesus Christ. And this is why we, we see the type of death that he died. Uh, 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 Christ or sin, uh, if you will, sin had to be thoroughly judged. It had to be thoroughly judged as sin. Uh, and then sin had to be thoroughly punished. Right? And so this is what Christ is dealing with here. He is suffering because of our sinfulness. He uh, 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 is an offering, if you will, a sacrifice uh, for our sins. And God is specifically punishing uh, uh, the sin nature through his son. And this is why we see the agony. and This is why we see uh, the public humiliation as we'll look at it in our second outline. Uh, we will look at how Christ died. And I want us to think about uh, everything that we know about Christ's death and his crucifixion. I want us to keep in mind that God is punishing sin, right? He is thoroughly judging it, and he is thoroughly punishing uh, uh, for it. I want you to look at Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 10, and you will see the kind of death that Jesus died. And this death was to sin, and this, this explains, if you will, what's going on with Christ here. Uh, verse 5 says, he was pierced for our transgressions. What does that mean? As I said earlier, Israel uh, was uh, judged or accused, if you will. They were indicted for their law-breaking transgressions, their law-breaking. Uh, uh, and so Christ was, was pierced, right? He was wounded for our law-breaking, right? Uh, 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 and so Israel was clearly breaking the laws of God. And Christ was uh, punished or pierced, if you will, uh, for the law-breaking of God's people. Uh, it says he was crushed for our iniquities. What does that mean? Uh, uh, Christ was crushed for our sinfulness and for uh, our uh, immorality. If you, uh, if you look at the uh, scope of prophecy, uh, 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 particularly as it relates to Isaiah, uh, his indictment uh, on the people at that time uh, specifically dealt with their moral uh, compass. Uh, they were immoral. They were extremely sinful. So Christ was crushed for our immorality and our sinfulness. And so we have to understand here that, that God is dealing with what we are struggling with, what Israel was struggling with. And so to, to, uh, 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 to atone for this type of activity or this law breaking and this immorality, Christ became that substitute. He became that uh, propitiation, if you will, for our sinfulness. And so he was punished for that. And we all saw it, right? We, we have witnessed, we have seen, we have read about uh, the account at Calvary and what all uh, Christ went through uh, for our sinfulness and our law-breaking. This is, this is something we really need to think about. But look at verse 6. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. And this is what happens, right? Without the power of God, we will go astray. Without the uh, 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 power of the Holy Spirit, 
we will not be able to keep ourselves. And so this is what happened to Israel. They had gone astray, right? Each one have turned to their own way of thinking, their own way of living, uh, and none of it was pleasing to God. And so the, the consequence uh, or the strategy, if you will, of this concept here of, of, of us being like sheep and having gone astray and have turned to do our own thing, if you will, the Lord God has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So every uh, 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 thing that we did to break the law, to sin, it, however many uh, uh, millions of people that is, all of humanity, uh, think about everybody doing their own thing and living how they want to live. God laid all of that uh, that that sinful activity on Jesus Christ, right? So he was carrying our conditions, all of it, all of our sinfulness. Jesus carried it to the cross. There are some um, four servant songs. I want to give you scriptures for that, and we're going to move to this second outline, Isaiah chapter 41, 42. Verses 1 through 4, uh, Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 6, uh, Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9, Isaiah chapter 52, verses uh, um, verse 13, and then uh, chapter 53, verse 12. All right. So the question is how does knowing that Jesus suffered? for you affect your level of commitment to him you know and I just want us to reflect uh, 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 on the fact that Christ was dealing with our nature right we have we have internal issues and this is why we sin I want you to look at Mark chapter 7 verses 1 through 23 our second outline is entitled The Suffering Servant's Humiliation. Still talking about Jesus. Still talking about uh, uh, what uh, he was coming to do through the eyes of Isaiah. From the NIV translation, verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Verse 8. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation uh, protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. Verse 9. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. Christ humbled himself. Um, as we gave you in our devotional uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 through 11. I hope that you will read that. But let's look at this as Isaiah saw this. Uh, he knew or he prophesied here that Christ would be uh, uh, oppressed right, and afflicted afflicted with the condition of humanity oppressed with the uh, 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 with the fact that this is how sin uh, uh, has uh, uh, brought us to a state where we are just bogged down we are just overwhelmed sin is a binding factor it is very oppressive right and it causes depression uh, our lifestyles and the, the uh, the sinful nature is extremely destructive, right? And Christ bore all of these things, the nature of how it affected us. Christ uh, 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 was permitted by God to embrace this, to, to feel this, how we feel this, to be afflicted by this nature as we are. Christ knew all about it, but he didn't, he didn't open his mouth, right? He was led away to the slaughter. To be crucified, right? And he did not open his mouth. Uh, uh, so by oppression, in other words, he was imprisoned, right? 
uh, uh, and, and then he was uh, uh, went into judgment. I want you to look at Isaiah 53 verse 3. It was not a part of our lesson. Uh, but uh, it goes on to say, yet who of his generation protested? No one, right? Nobody uh, uh, spoke up uh, about this. For he was cut off from the land of the living. Christ died, right, for our sins. Uh, 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 we tell people all the time from Romans that the wages of sin is death. Uh, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so Christ is going through this uh, uh, prescription, if you will, that God has uh, uh, announced and, and, and has prophesied uh, that this is the way to defeat this sin, to deceit, uh, defeat this nature, is to put it on my son uh, uh, who is innocent, who has done nothing wrong but who is going to mediate on behalf of humanity who is going to come to the aid and then God is saying I'm going to uh, afflict him uh, with this sinful nature I'm going to judge I'm going to uh, punish this sinful nature through my only begotten son and he will be the sacrifice right he will set things in order he will be the atoning sacrifices uh, sacrifice for uh, humanity so others can be saved right this is this is something that I don't know if we really appreciate uh, sometimes that uh, 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 when someone is paying for you paying the cost for you uh, he's dying so you could live. He's dying so we could have a relationship with God the Father. But we cannot do it because of this sinful nature. And God knows that uh, when the people sin, when Israel sin, it broke the fellowship. It broke, uh, it broke down that, that, that love and affection. And so God was not pleased because the union, because of the sinfulness of his people, had been disturbed by their conduct. And so God had uh, 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 traveled with them through this circumstance. And, and God saw fit to bring into uh, the world his only begotten son to address this matter so you and I could enjoy a, a relationship and a fellowship with him through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. I hope this is making a, a, a sense to you today. And just so we know at, at verse 9 from Isaiah 53 lets us know this was not because of something Jesus had done. This was not because of, of a, a way of life that he chose. The Bible is saying here through prophecy here, though he had done no violence, he was not guilty of, of what he was being punished for. But we are, right? We were guilty. And so uh, 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 Christ took it upon himself uh, to mediate on our behalf, to deal with this sin aspect. Question here, how do you feel when you reflect on Jesus' intense suffering, humiliation, and death for you, right? And so again, uh, if you study the book of uh, Philippians, uh, the word joy uh, is announced some 18 times in that short epistle. Uh, it is the theme of, of the book of uh, Philippians, the joy of knowing Christ. And so we ought to feel joy today about what God has done on our behalf that we didn't have to uh, 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 make this kind of sacrifice, that we didn't have to die. We are the recipients uh, uh, of the blessing, if you will, of God's mercy uh, 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 that he has demonstrated his loving kindness toward us, that he would send his only begotten son to pay this price for our sinful nature. Our last outline, this suffering servant's triumph. This is taken from Isaiah 53, uh, verse 10 and 11 from the NIV uh, translation. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord uh, uh, makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days 
and the and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Verse 11. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. You know, this verse 10, if I can just say this to you today, this, this particular verse has always bothered me over the years. Uh, 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 as I read it, and I would read it, and I would read it again, uh, 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 it was the Lord's will to crush him, him, Christ, and to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. God's will is something that we really need to take a hard look at. Uh, who would have thought that the Lord's will would be to crush his only begotten son and everything that we understand about the, uh, the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The King James Version of verse 10 uh, uh, says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It was the Lord's will. It pleased the Lord to crush his son and cause him to suffer. Why would that be pleasing to the Lord? Right? It would be pleasing to the Lord because he's doing away with the sin nature. He is literally defeating it. He is literally killing it, mortifying it through his son. He is putting an end to it once and for all. I want you to understand this. God is putting an end to sin once for all, right? One time through his son. He is crushing him, symbolizing he is crushing sin. He is eradicating it. So through his son, so you and I can go free. Why do you think we praise the Lord? One of the things that we, as we think about praising God, uh, it, it, it's retrospect, right? It looks back and it sees this prophecy. It looks back and it sees this salvation. It looks back and it sees how good God has been. And then it's prospect, our praise, right? It looks forward, right? It looks forward uh, in a way that we can live free. We can live in the liberty of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't have to if we commit and surrender our lives. Do you know it is possible for you to live in this world and 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 not be uh, 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 not live a sinful life? Don't you know that the scripture is clear? John said, greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. We have power now through this resurrection, through this sacrifice of Jesus Christ to live victorious lives. But sin has to be addressed. Sin has to be dealt with. And Christ is dealing with it. God is prescribing in this prophecy here that he is dealing with it. He is crushing his son. He is causing him to suffer. And, 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 and I like this. And though uh, the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. You and I are the offspring of this sacrifice. You and I are the beneficiaries of this sacrifice. You and I are the recipients of such grace and such mercy. And we are running around now and we're praising God and we're thanking God. And we are able to do that now because of this sacrifice. We, can, we are brought out from our past. We were brought out of our sinful lives, our sinful nature, our destructive nature. Just like Israel, we were literally destroying ourselves. But the mercy and the grace and the loving kindness of the Lord have brought you and I to such salvation now. And Christ is looking at this offspring and it goes on to say he he's pro, he will and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. God is still saving people. Let's be clear. This sacrifice is still working 
in the lives of God's people. It is still working in our lives. We have been saved for years, right? For days, for time on end. We have been saved perpetually. And we are enjoying our lives with Christ free from sin because of this one offering, because of this one sacrifice, because of this one prophecy that has been fulfilled. Verse 11, and after he has suffered, he will see the light of life. Be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. Right? We are justified. Right? Through Jesus Christ, we are justified. And he will bear their iniquity. Right? Christ did it for us. He did it for those. And I, 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 when I was reading this, I thought about the good news in this prophecy. It, you know, we, we, we ought to be more appreciative now that there, there, is, there is a great opportunity here. Even for those who are not saved, but certainly for those of us that are saved. We are enjoying our relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to look at Romans chapter 8 verse 32. John chapter 12 verse 24. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 and as I said earlier I want to give you the fulfillment of this uh, of this prophecy um, from Isaiah uh, 53 verse 4 I want you to look at the fulfillment in Romans chapter 4 verse 25 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 and 25 from Isaiah 53 verse 5 I want you to look at Romans chapter 3 verse 25 these are all fulfillments right for Isaiah 53 verses 6 and 8 I want you to look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 Isaiah 53 verse 7 I want you to look at John chapter 10 verse 11 right Isaiah chapter 53 verse 9 I want you to look at John chapter 19 verse 38 through 42 and for Isaiah 53 verse 10 and 11 I want you to look at Romans chapter 5 verses 15 through 19 and look at it and look and see what God has done through this prophecy and through this sacrifice I hope trust and pray that I've given you some things to think about today this prophecy is so deep. There's so much to, to, to revisit and to comprehend in this day and this time as we uh, have come to another uh, Easter celebration, if we come to another resurrection uh, 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 memorial, if you will, uh, to see what God has done and see why we celebrate uh, uh, the life of Jesus Christ, how it how it changed us, right? Uh, because of this prophecy, we are forever changed. And we have enough biblical uh, 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 scriptures here to give us biblical hope. We have enough to study, right? To keep us confident that what God has started, He will finish. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. Father, we thank you for the power of this prophecy. We thank you for using men and women down through the years to help us to understand that you want us to be confident, that you want us to be hopeful, that you want us to be sure that what you have began in our lives will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this season as we celebrate again the life of Jesus Christ, what it means, what the cross means, what, what the death means, what the resurrection means, what the blood means, and how we are justified through this sacrifice. Father, we thank you for each and every family today. We pray God's speed that you will continue to look and have mercy upon our land today, our homes today, our lives today, and certainly our hearts and minds we thank you, Father, for the loving kindness that you have shown through Jesus Christ our Lord. We believe, 
We believe today that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we call it done. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.